are talking inflation tonight here on Open Line, and we have loved to have your calls. We would love to have more. 615-737-PLUS is the number to call. This is something impacting all of us, no matter if you consider yourself rich or poor, no matter where you live in the mid-state. All of us are paying more every time we go to the grocery store or the gas pump or open an electric bill. It's hitting all of us. Dr. Hannah Stoles is our expert tonight, an associate professor at Lipscomb University dealing with supply chain management. Dr. Stoles, thank you again for being with us. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. Well, good. We've covered a lot of ground tonight uh, talking about why we are in this predicament inflation at its highest level in 40 years. We've covered that, but I want to talk about relief. What is going to bring it and how quickly we can expect it when the things start going correctly? Yeah, I think um, there's a couple different levers maybe of relief. So, you know, I talked a little bit earlier about the um, balancing of supply and demand. So, you know, seeing relief come through economies opening back up, um, you know, we've seen countries around the world start lifting, you know, travel restrictions. We've seen economies start to open up. And I will say as well, when we talk, we've talked about inflation pretty much from a U.S. perspective, but it's, it's impacting the whole world. We're seeing inflation in Europe. We saw, you know, inflation rates in the UK, um, you know, in similar kind of similar trends to what we've seen in the US. So it is, it is definitely global. So when we think about what does the relief look like globally? Well, we hope that with the pandemic kind of shifting and, and you know, um, that supply chains will open back up, that product flow will become more consistent. And the other thing is, as prices go up, which we've seen in our, you know, our grocery baskets um, it also forces consumers you know to maybe buy a little bit less to be a little bit more budget conscious than maybe we've been over the last five years and as we start you know buying a little bit less and um, investing a little less it actually increases supply on the shelf and that may be the initial start we, we will see the fed probably raise interest rates um incrementally I'm, I'm guessing it'll be marginal but um that will also slow buying as well so maybe the car industry will catch up um so those are kind of some of the ways you know if we see relief in sight um gosh let's just get out of this pandemic that would help us <laughs> a lot just to find relief in the near future hopefully i know i can't be the only person who wonders this but i think you know if if procter and gamble knows that they can charge me twenty dollars for laundry detergent right now and i'm willing to pay it because i want to do my laundry even when they have their supply caught up will they say we're just going to keep our price at twenty dollars does that happen that does happen and actually there's been a lot of um, some really interesting articles, you know, out there kind of looking at are companies just raising their prices because they could? And are they actually just taking advantage of us, you know, and especially in the food industry, because, you know, when you think about the food industry, it's not a global supply chain. A lot of our food is, you know, grown in America, you know, it's sourced here locally. And but the, the costs of food in the grocery store have have global reach, right? You know the packaging the, the plastics that package our product come from china and uh, around the world and so even though food companies might have record profit margin this year they're forward forecasting for the increase of costs next year and the increase of transportation costs and the increase of warehousing costs that they felt in their labor pools and if their wages go up you know they have to do some forward planning so um i don't think that we're there's always going to be companies that maybe take advantage. I don't know, but I don't think overarchingly, a lot of companies did hold their prices steady at the beginning of COVID. And we're just now, well, we're not just now, we're starting to see the increases. Although we do, I do think prices peaked in October. Oh, wow. So inflation was at its highest in October, almost 1% in that month. And we've seen it kind of ease off of that really, really high mark for that month. So maybe it's peaked. Some economists would say it has and that maybe the end is in sight. Does it go down as quickly as it seems to go up? Goodness, I don't know. Um, I don't think that we have enough, you know, data to kind of say over time, um, you know, will it go down as quickly? It probably won't. Some prices will be here to stay for a while. Well, that's not the news I was hoping for. <laughs> I don't think anybody is, but I appreciate the yeah. honesty. <laughs> All right, Tom is, Tom is back on the line with us. Tom, go ahead. Did you remember your other question or comment? Yeah, I sure did, but okay. I want to respond to that woman that called in about, <laughs> come on, give me a break. I got a message for her. You're entitled to your own opinion, but not your own facts. You know where she gets her information? Fox News. 
people like her are dangerous. She probably thinks the uh, uh, January 6th uh, attack on the Capitol was a peaceful protest. Well, let's move well, on from all that. We need to okay, not do well, tit for let's tat. Do because I okay. want to, I want to, I wanted to, I remember the other thing I wanted Good. to ask you. I got something from the IRS yesterday. I can hardly read it. Uh, something about a fourteen hundred dollar stimulus check. Mm -hmm. Is 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 that something that's going on and happening? You, you know. Uh, and anyway, I know why the feds are raising the interest rates. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> you know. So I'll stand by and okay. listen. Thank you very okay. much. Hey Tom, I bet. Look, read that letter really carefully. The the IRS is sending out letters saying, "Hey, we just want to let you know what your stimulus was because it has to do with your tax return. You have to file that. So it will probably say your." your stimulus check that was paid in, you know, whatever, May of last year, whenever it came out, was for this much. So just read that really carefully. It's probably, it's not a new check, not a new check there. So keep that letter though. It's very important that you have it when it comes to filing your taxes this year. All right, let's hop back into this inflation conversation. What, what's happening in your classes right now as you teach at Lipscomb? What, what are the main topics that your students are interested in when it deals with this economy right now? Yeah, I think that there's a lot of interest in terms of, um, and maybe interest is, is, you know, very excited. Curiosity, you know, maybe questions mm -hmm. <laughs> about, you know, if, if we can't manufacture, if we can't bring products out of China, um, where does manufacturing go? Yeah, Do we great. reshore it? You know, does it come back to the U.S.? Can we afford to do that? You know, it, and it raises prices if we have higher labor making our products, right? And so that, that does mean it's a price increase. Um, to stay, uh, or do we see more nearshoring? And nearshoring is interesting. That's where you know we instead of moving back to the U.S., instead of you know having you know Asia and the Pacific Ocean to cross, we see products getting manufactured in Mexico and Central and South America, um, and a little bit closer to home. So I think it's it's interesting to kind of look at what is the outlook of where our products are going to be made and sourced from in you know in the future. And then you know there's always lots of, of discussion around um, around our infrastructure. And we do need infrastructure in the U.S. We need deeper water in our ports so that we aren't bottlenecking in California. And um, we need, you know, bridges and roads. And it looks like we're going to need more railroads, right? If we don't have enough truckers um, to get trucks down the road, we need really efficient um, rail services. So uh, I think infrastructure and transportation and where our products are going to come from in the future are pretty interesting topics that we're having in the classroom today. Mm, for sure. Okay, let's go back to the lines. We have Dorothy on the line. Dorothy, thank you for your call tonight. Yeah, I have a question for y'all. I got a letter in the mail like that, and you explained it right because that's what it was. Mm. But what I'm calling about, reckon they're going to give us another stimulus check pretty soon. I tell you, it's, it's hard on people when they cut your medicine, you have to buy it. And it, it just uh, it it just pays so much. I have a handicapped son, and I tell you, it's really hard. It's hard on everybody, I'm sure. Oh, it is, but especially folks who are on a fixed income. Dorothy, thank you for calling in and bringing up that point. And that's something a lot of folks are saying um, on our, our Facebook page, too, where we're streaming, is that for folks who are on a fixed income, this time period is especially tough. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and it always hurts. You know, if you have a lot of excess cash, if you have a lot of buying power, inflation hurts you the least. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, so the, so the wealthiest basically are hurt the least for sure. And if you are on a fixed income and your wages aren't increasing to cover those price differences, you know, social security only keeps up so much. Yeah. And so it is, it is a big challenge. Um, and yeah, hopefully in, in that space, at least our food prices don't stay high. Mm -hmm. You explained earlier at the beginning of the show how when the pandemic first hit, a lot of people stayed home. So their spending on certain things like vacations went way down and we were saving money. And so we could spend on everyday things like home improvement around the house or going to the grocery and buying things that we usually don't. Um, do we need to start taking those vacations again and things like that? Will that help balance our economy out? 
Yeah, it certainly won't hurt. I mean, and it, as you think about it, you know, if we if we shift where we're spending, you know, and we're not spending as much on, you know, furniture and mm. electronics. And um, I mean, if you can get a car right now, you know, that, that's <laughs> been a challenge anyway. Uh, and, it, you know, as you shift demand over, um, it definitely helps alleviate some of the pressure on the store shelf, you know, in terms of the supply there. And um, the challenge we're going to face right now and you know, to be as, as positive about it as I can is that, you know, we know that if you've gone to a restaurant lately, that they're short staffed. Right. And, you know, with hotels, they've they've cut down and if they've cut staff, you know, I've, I've been traveling a little bit more this year and, you know, you go to hotels and they have their cleaning service is a little more varied. Like, you, mm-hmm. you know, you can opt now to say, well, you know, don't make my bed or clean my room until I, you know, check out. Um, and so I think we we want to go on those vacations and we want to see the profit margin of the service industry go back up um, so they can start re-employing people. But I think it's it's going to be a little messy initially, um, that shift in where demand and where spending is going in our economy. So definitely go on vacation, go out to eat. Um, it'll help restaurants build out some of their, their revenue so they can have more workers come back. That will be a good day. I think we, we've started to get used to living in a little bit of a messy life these days and in many facets of our lives. We're going to take another quick break. We have some more calls to get to when we come back. We'll do that and wrap things up. Stay with us.